Jonathan Pritchett. I'm at Tulane University. Uh, I'm, an, I'm an economist. Oh, those are fighting words at a history <laughs> convention. You'd be surprised. Sometimes there's useful information to be found from an economist. Even from an economist. <laughs> All right, look, I don't want to be provocative. The last time I studied slavery was 30 years ago. Fogel and Engerman, they were fighting words. Yes. What's new about slavery economics since then? Well, I think many of the things that they talked about continue to be worked on, um, and certainly reliance on quantitative data is important. Uh, economists have uh, some analytical skills which can be useful in terms of analyzing that data. Uh, in particular, in this, partic in this paper that uh, Charles Carroll Maris and I have been working on, uh, we've collected information on slave sales from New Orleans, Louisiana. And the idea is to collect a large body of data which we can then use economic techniques in order to analyze. And have you got a stunning conclusion that's going to uh, rock the history profession? Uh, sure. Uh, I would say that uh, one of the things we do find is that there's a large decrease in the price of slaves in the months prior to the Civil War. Um, our argument is that this shows pessimism on the part of Southern slaveholders regarding Lincoln's election and then Lincoln's decision to uh, mobilize troops following Fort Sumter. Is the uh, price going down because they think they're going to lose their slaves or they're going to lose the war? There are a lot of different uh, possibilities there. We, we talk about this in our work. Uh, one of the things that you might expect to see is that if there is anticipated uncompensated emancipation, and to be careful here, when I mean uncompensated emancipation, this is in reference to the slaveholder, not the slave. But if this was true, then we would expect to find relative price effects. In particular, we should see the prices of women of childbearing age and also children falling relative to those of adults. And in fact, we don't, from which we conclude that it's primarily the threat of war that we're concerned, that Southerners are concerned about, and not so much the threat to uh, slave property, their, their rights to own slaves. Would slavery historians who aren't familiar with this economic research, uh, would they find a problem with uh, what you're uh, concluding? I think that's a very good question. <laughs> Maybe I should ask an historian. Um, I, I don't know. I think this is complimentary. I would suspect that historians will find this useful in terms of uh, framing their own research. The main thing is always nice to have a fact, something to, to actually build around. Oh, 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 <laughs> ouch. <laughs> historians don't have facts. Okay. Uh, maybe That's we should bring trouble. in my co-author. Maybe bring in your co-author. All right, we're going to go wide here. All right. Here, you can both stand there. All That's right. fine. Okay, so um, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Charles Calamiris. All right. Just, nice uh, uh, and and uh, I was catching that last uh, discussion the two of you were having. <laughs> and I think what John meant to say <laughs> was that really historians, in a sense, had too many facts. Because if, if you look at the questions that he was just talking about, um, what were the most important issues in people's minds that was driving the secession debates in the South? What, how did Southerners believe that the political events that they were seeing, the Dred Scott decision, Lincoln's election, how did they see that as affecting the viability of slavery going forward? The, the problem is that if you read, let's say, speeches, Lincoln's speeches, or you read the convention debates uh, about secession, or you read the newspapers, you will get great facts from that. The problem is that you don't know how to aggregate those facts because people are in disagreement. How, how do you take into account, let's say on the Dred Scott decision, uh, the fact that some people looked at the Dred Scott decision and said, hey, that's a big win for slaveholders. Others looked at it and said, don't count your chickens before they're uh, hatched because Maybe this is going to create a political backlash. Or some people said, oh, expanding slavery into new territories will be a great idea. Uh, others said, no, no, maybe not. So the, what our um, data allow us to do is to, in some sense, come up with a, an aggregator of those opinions based on people who are participating in the market 
who were maybe among the most expert at weighing the probabilities of those outcomes. So I think, in some sense, all we're really doing is helping historians to weigh the facts that they already have. All right, all right. Hey, hang on, hang on. You guys are economists, so of course, you think everything's really rational. It sounds like your argument is that those slaveholders were really taking a very rational approach to oh, but the issues. historians already know that because if you read the newspaper or you read the convention debates, they are hyper rational, very detailed. Uh, so, for example, the Georgia convention, you go, you know, imagine in today's world of uh, news clips, you know, five second uh, attention to a news story, debates that are all sort of showmanship and, and nonsense by politicians. Now imagine this instead. People go to the Capitol for several days and without any amplification, much less radio and television, are listening in hushed silence to speeches that may go for a couple of hours talking about each counterfactual of what will Lincoln do if this and what if that and if we do secede, what will happen? If we don't secede, what will happen? What probabilities? What consequences? Uh, and then the next day somebody comes and gives the opposite speech. It is hyper-rational. The news articles are hyper-rational. The debates are hyper-rational. It's not really a question. I don't think we're, we're not making the argument uh, about the rationality of the decision. That's prima facie obvious. Um, these were very extensively debated. Um, but the real issue is, what's the weighting? And that you can only know, I think, by looking at these prices. Thank you so much. Thank you. And nice job. Nice job for you too. <laughs> Until you insulted everybody. <laughs>